All right, and welcome to the beginning of our SOL review. This is SOL topic number one, graphs of functions. And in each of these videos, we are going to be showing you tips and tricks from the Desmos online calculator. So at this point, we would like for you to pull up the Desmos calculator. If you are watching this video from your tablet, please slide this video screen to the side and open up a new browser window to access Desmos. If you are watching this video from your phone, please get your tablet and open up Desmos from there. How we would like for you to access Desmos, go to LCPS Go and click on the Desmos Graphing Calculator app. It looks like this. When you do that, your screen will look like this. Please note that it should be green up at the top and say Desmos Virginia Standards of Learning version. This is the version that you will be using on the online test at the end of this year. If this is the first time you're looking at this screen, well, welcome to Desmos. If you're not yet looking at this screen, please pause the video until you are. A few things before we get started. There's a wrench up here in the top right. I like to click on that wrench and turn on the arrows. That just means that I'm going to have arrows on my axes. There's some other things you can explore in there if you wish turn that off. If you use the plus signs and minus signs to zoom in and zoom out, that gives you more detail for your graph. If you ever want to go back to the standard zoom, just click the home and you'll be back to the standard zoom. We're going to be typing our equations in over here. There's also a keyboard down in the bottom left, a keypad, and that has many of the fancy symbols that we're going to explore in this packet. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be showing you some of the interesting symbols that we've explored or will be exploring in Algebra 2. Let's start with the absolute value bar. If you need the absolute value bars for a graph, you're going to hit the keypad and, well, there's the absolute value bars. So when I go to start typing, I might start typing y equals, and in my keypad, there's the absolute value bars right there, and I might just do the absolute value bars, uh, the absolute value of x. And as soon as I type that, I have the graph of y equals the absolute value of x. Great. The next symbol is the square root symbol. That's also in the keypad, and it looks like the square root symbol. So I might start a second equation, and let's type y equals and pull up the square root symbol. Here it is down here. And I might do the square root of x. So now I have two equations. One is in green, and one is in purple. If that gets confusing because there's two there, you can turn one of them off by unselecting it. And now we're just looking at the square root graph. Let's go to a third one. The cube root. So the cube root or any other root that we want other than the square root, it's in the keypad. We're going to go over to the functions, hit miscellaneous, and then look for this symbol. So let's see what that does. Let's go to the keypad. We're going all the way over here to functions. And we're in the trig functions. We want to be in miscellaneous. And that symbol is right here. And that'll pull up this symbol. Oops, let me go behind that and type in y equals. We've got a spot for our index. Let's just go ahead and put a 3 for a cube root. And let's type an x right here. And we've got the cube root of x. As soon as we do that, now we have this new graph. I might turn off the square root. And now I'm just looking at the cube root. OK, so these are where all of our symbols are. If we want to type a rational equation, that means a fraction. If you want to have a fraction, all you need to do is hit that forward slash on your keyboard. So let's go and see what that looks like. Let's do y equals, and I'm just going to hit the forward slash on my keyboard, and I instantly have a spot for a fraction. And let's type in 3 divided by x plus 1, and there's our rational equation in red, or our rational graph. Maybe I turn off the cube root. OK, let's see what's next. A logarithmic function. We'll be exploring that a little bit later this year. We're going to hit the keypad, go to functions. In miscellaneous, we're either going to use the log button or the log with the base button. So let's go see what that looks like. I'll type in a fifth equation, and I'll do y equals. And again, I'm over here in functions. And I'm still in miscellaneous. I've got two logarithmic buttons. This is just a common log. So it's just the common log of, let's just say, x. And I'll close my parentheses and turn off my rational. There it is. Or if I wanted a different type of base, y equals over here at functions and the log with a certain base, that might be a base of 3. 
and I'll go into the parentheses and type in X. And there's the difference between those two. Again, we'll be exploring those a little bit later this year, but that's where the symbols would be. Okay, and one other note, f of x and g of x, if you see these fancy symbols, those are really just fancy symbols for y. So in my Desmos calculator, I could be using y equals, or I could simply type f of x equals. Both of them will do exactly the same thing. Those are just fancy names. Okay, we have one example to show you here. Which function is best represented by this graph? So we're given a graph, and we want to see which of these equations matches this graph. Well, this should be pretty easy on Desmos. All we have to do is type in each of these functions and see which one looks like the graph. So I'm going to pull up my Desmos. I'd like to clear all of this stuff out, and the fastest way to do that, you can X them out individually. But if you hit this uh, settings and just delete all, then they're all gone. Okay, so let's see what we need to type. I'm gonna first start with a. f of x equals eight divided by x plus three. Clearly I need a fraction. I don't need to type f of x, but just to practice, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. f of x equals, and I need a fraction, so I'm hitting the slash. And it's eight divided by, I believe it was x plus three. And now I'm instantly looking at that graph. It looks like this graph has a y-intercept right here, just above two, just below three. Let's go see what our graph over here looked like. Ooh, it didn't have a y-intercept anywhere near there. So I know that this is not gonna be one of the answers, and as soon as I know that this is not one of the answers, I put an x, and I'll move on to the next one. Maybe it's eight divided by x minus three. So I might just go right in here and change that plus sign to a minus sign. And let's see what we have here. Oh, this time the y-intercept is down here, negative 2.667, just a little bit above negative 3 or below negative 2. Let's see what that looks like here. Ooh, you know what? That looks about the same. That looks about the same. I'm thinking that this might be the answer. I'm going to practice typing in the other equations and just to see what the graphs look like. So, uh, ooh, I forgot what it was, x plus 1 divided by x plus 3. Let's see what that looks like. I'm going to go in here and change the 8 to an x plus 1, and the denominator is an x plus 3. And let's see, yeah, that's not it. This y-intercept and x-intercept are right here near the origin, and the graph that I have, well, it doesn't even go that way. So I know that c is not going to be correct. And I've got this last one, x plus 1 divided by x minus 3. So I'll go change the plus sign to a minus sign. And let's see what I've got. Yeah, same situation. The x and y intercepts are right here near the origin. And I know that that graph is not like that. So we have our winner, pi by d. And my winner is answer b. So the Desmos calculator is very helpful when you're looking to match a graph with an equation. You just type in here. Thanks for watching this video, and let's explore more in the next videos. Have fun with our packet.